I found something the other day while we were out that I think is quite fascinating. Nobody else will probably think it's fascinating, but I do. Now, I've lived around here all my life. I've lived within five miles of here all my life. At the moment, I live about five minutes drive away. It's within walking distance. We come up here all the time. And I'm in the middle of a deciduous woodland and I've found something that I never thought of before. This land is, a lot of it is constructed landscape. It was, it was a lot of it was planted by Lord Leverhulme in about 1900 to 1925. But a lot of it, I think, is natural woodland. There's a lot of woodland round here. You can't have planted it all. There's a lot of massive amount of deciduous woodland. Uh, and I was walking the other day down this path and we're going to come on it in a minute. And no, I can't stop looking for this phenomenon. But I looked and I suddenly noticed being in the middle of this natural old woodland that the trees at our side of the road are in a dead straight line behind me. I don't know whether you'll be able to see them, but the horse chestnut, and the horse chestnut, there's a line of them, and this line goes all the way along this path. And at the other side, there's horse chestnut and beech. They are in a dead straight line, and actually now looking across now, the, the massive carpet of bluebell on both sides of me, which is terrific and wonderful. But this is a man-made path. And there's another man-made path down there. And they planted on both sides with a line of horse chestnuts to, to make like an avenue. And I never noticed it before. And no, I can't stop looking at it. I can't stop looking for it on the path around here. Now, he can't have planted all this woodland up. There's just too much of it. So I think this is a natural old woodland, deciduous woodland, mixed species he put a path through and then planted these trees a hundred years ago and they've blended in so it looks like you're walking through a completely natural woodland but you're not because there's an avenue of trees on both sides in a dead straight line and it's the same down the bottom there i've just had a look down there it's ash and beet up here is horse chestnut and I think that's absolutely fascinating. I've never noticed it. And this shows how sympathetic the planting was all those years ago. How much thought they put into it. Because it took me nearly 70 years to realise that I am now walking through an only partially natural woodland. Let me just walk over here under the trees I don't know whether you can see that, but there's a line of trees in a dead straight line there at the side of the path. And you think, well, why have they planted them in a dead straight line? Wouldn't that be obvious? But I think they kind of understood how things blend in, that they knew that it would become part of the natural woodland over the years. Oh, blooming clever stuff. But the trouble is, no, I can't stop looking for it and I can't stop looking at it because I've found it. And like I said, we're in the middle of a dense woodland. Then man has come along and has so beautifully and sympathetically planted in it that it's just become part of the norm with this lovely, fairly wide, cobbled, path running through it so that the path itself blends in the path itself doesn't impact on the woodland at all it's so sympathetic i'm blown away pretty much blown away it's a lovely morning it's it's hardly a breath of wind it says it's going to be dry i'm looking up i can just about see through the canopy of trees above me blue sky so I think we're going to have a nice day. I think me and Molly are going to stay out. What say you? We're walking under the uh, 
Under the branches of the horse chestnut now, there's a pond on our left hand side. The ground is completely covered in brown leaves. They're damp now because we've had a lot of rain lately. I think it must have rained heavily last night while we were asleep because the ground is quite wet. But there's not a breath of wind. It's cool. It smells great. There's a lot of hawthorn. And hawthorn, when it's in blossom, it has a cloying smell. But I have noticed over the last couple of days, you can see the hawthorn blossom ready to come out. But even now, when you walk near it, the smell is fantastic. So when you're out in a boat and you're walking by hawthorn, there's a lot of it on footpaths, um, canal sides, things like that. Just have a breathe in. The smell is almost overpowering. Oh, listen, Molly's barking at squirrels. We're coming out from under the trees now. The sky above is blue, so I think we're gonna have a nice day. I think Molly and I will be staying out quite a lot today. A couple of spots of rain, I think. Very, very still, very still, very quiet, apart from the bird song. Hardly any humans about, which is quite nice. It's Tuesday, it's the first work day after the um, bank holiday. I hope we all had a good bank holiday. We did. Tons and tons and tons of bluebell. I don't know whether you can see them, but tons of bluebells. And we walk across the path. And then we've got a little stream. Babbling brook. And the birds singing away. And then we walk across the other side of the path. More bluebells. I mean, what is not to love about the English countryside? It's diverse. It's green. Yes, people complain about the English climate being damp. But if it wasn't damp, we wouldn't have this greenery. Small price to pay, I think. We're walking by the Pine Eatum now on our right hand side. That's where we usually sit. There's a bench in the middle of it. And there's lots of plaques in memory of people by underneath the trees. It's all very nice. It's a lovely, quiet place to just sit and reflect on life, the universe and everything. 42. If you know, you know. I think we're all under pressure, aren't we? You know, it's, I keep saying get out in the countryside, but we are under pressure, especially if you're still working. And you do a hard graft all week and then you come home and there's things to do because you've not had time to do them during the week. And then you've no time to yourself. And then by the time you're ready to have a minute, it's time to go back to work. But we need to just make a little bit of time for yourself. And if you get out in the countryside, it's so helpful because it's, it's peaceful. When you're out here, you can't do anything else. There's no point worrying about the rest of your life because you detach from it. You can't do anything about it. Leave your bloody phone at, work, at home and then you can't be contacted and get out here. And it's so good for the soul. It's beautiful, it's stunning. I mean, this is just, there's nothing. All there is is a lot of green, a sky above me, and the sound of birdsong. And I think that's what we've got to do. We've got to par down to the basics, all our experiences. Because when you do, it, it's so uncomplicated. And I think that's the beauty of the countryside is that it's, it's uncomplicated, it's non-threatening. It doesn't demand anything of you. You demand nothing of it. And it's just very, very beautiful, very therapeutic place to be. She'll be able to get it on a prescription, you know. It's like a, it's like a medicine. Molly and I are going to continue our walk now, aimlessly, very slowly, taking in all the sights and the sounds, the beautiful bluebells to my left, the gorgeous new growth on the trees, the sun coming through, the branches, and this beautiful dappled light on the vivid green grass, the sound of bird song, the old squirrel for Molly to bark at. Peace, silence, not a breath of wind. Got to stay out on days like this because we don't get enough of them. I hope you all have a good week, kids. Till next time, peace and love.